Hey everyone, this is Gleb and today I want to show you a short video that uh, Jamie Jr. posted on LinkedIn. And let's look at this. He's showing a couple of Cypress tests and each one opens a pop-up and the tests are all passing. You can see they click, they confirm, they all are green and in spirit of knowledge sharing and better test writing, I would like to take my um, spin and show them my version of the same test. So I asked Jamie to post the code and he graciously agreed and I forked the repo. And the only thing I added was you know, prettier. So the code looks nice when I show it. And I added these comments that kind of will show what I will do to refactor this test to make them more robust and actually shorter and more elegant. Okay, so let's start with the first test. JavaScript alert, it probably uses window alert. And, you know, Jamie wrote that if you click on a button, then when the alert happens, then you confirm that the text the alert box receives from application is correct. So let's see if it happens. I will open Cypress. And to end testing, Electron is fine. Let's move it to the side and let's run the first test. All right, so it passed. So obviously it's not broken. It clicks on the first button, perfect. And it does confirm that the alert has the text that you expect to be. But here's a problem with this test. This is on click handler. It only will check the alert text if it is actually called. If we disable the click, well, the test still passes even though the alert doesn't happen. So you wanna confirm that if you cause an action like by clicking, when this action actually happens. And the way to refactor is by doing the following. I'm gonna move the text into a variable right here. So right now nothing has changed. And then I'm gonna replace this callback function with a stop. So size stop creates a synon function that you can just pass around, but you can also give it an alias, let's say alert. And later you can say, give me this alias function under the name alert and you can make an assertion like should have been called once and now we confirm that this alert was actually called by the application if i skip calling clicking the button right it times out and you can control how long it waits for the stop function to be called so let's say one second so it's faster okay but if you click it does call what about the text well, this stop should have been called once with, and then you can pass the tag. So it actually checks the first argument of the stop. So that's our first test. Let's move to the second one and let's make it simpler. So we're clicking on the second button. It should probably pop up a model body. And notice it actually shows that it's invisible because all these pops, pops, they have a little bit of a fade. So here's what I will do again. I will take the expected text and I will move it right here. So it's separate. And then instead of getting an item, invoking the text, trimming it, I'll use site contains command. So this is the selector and this is the expected text and I can remove everything else. Okay, so it's still the same test, but now much shorter. But now let's improve it. It should be visible, right? We're not just confirming that uh, it exists, we just want to confirm that the user can see it. Another thing that we can do better is once we found the close button, and again, we probably want to confirm it's a button and not just clicking on a text close. We want to confirm that after this action, the model goes away. So we can take the same selector, but we don't have text because we don't care about the text anymore. We'll just say should not exist. And let's see if it works. And in this case, it doesn't work because that mod is still in the DOM. It just is invisible. Okay. So this is exactly the same test, but now better because it confirms that closing the dialog actually makes it hidden. The last test has a few things that might be improved in my opinion. So let's start one by one and I'm going to just return so we can only uh, click on the button. So right now it seems like we are clicking on a paragraph link. So that's weird. Let's look back. We're clicking on this 
Ajax loader. Let's look at the markup. Maybe we can select it slightly better. So it's a div with class thumbnail that has Ajax loader header. And then inside we have, you know, a link. Okay. So probably we want to click on Ajax loader, right? So we can say contains div with um, thumbnail and Ajax loader text. And inside we'll find the link and then we'll click. Okay. So now it's much better and much clearer what we're trying to click. Then it says the loader should not exist. And now this is kind of weird, right? We're clicking, I can see this loader and then, well, it's not there. So obviously something is wrong. I see the loader assertion that's green is passing and says, I, it doesn't exist. So what's happening? Let's look at the markup. It's the ID loader. It's not the class loader. So we need to replace it with an ID selector but we still might have a problem. This check might pass immediately, even before the loader actually has a chance to appear on the screen. So I always suggest after you do an action, first confirm that what you expect to happen actually happens. So the loader should be visible and then it should not exist. So it's visible. So we know the loader showed up and then it went away. And what do we do next? We wait for the Google Analytics call. Now the Google Analytics was set up using Sci Intercept using a wildcard. Now that's a little bit weird, don't you think? So how many times did it actually work? Five times. Now obviously we're intercepting everything and not just the Google Analytics. We're interested in only intercepting something that goes to www.googleanalytics.com. But instead we are getting, for example, another page intercepted. Okay. So we want to make it more precise by giving it a host name, www.google-analytics.com. Okay. And now notice only the calls that really go to Google Analytics are intercepted. There's one more thing. Notice when I hover over intercept, I have no IntelliSense. It doesn't actually tell me any help about Cypress commands. We're working in a JavaScript project, but even inside JavaScript, you can use this special triple slash comment and you can say reference types from Cypress because we're using Cypress global variables like Cy and by adding this special comment, you tell your code editor to load those global definitions. And now you can see this is Cy intercept, this is Cy get command and so on. Okay. So what do we do next? We clicking on the button uh, that says click me. Look, why don't we just do that, right? Why don't we say contains selector click me? So we are clear about what we do. And then we have exactly the same thing as before. So we will move it up and we will use site contains command text Esperado should be visible. And then we say contains and button close. Okay. Let's see if it works. Loader goes away right about now. Okay. Should not exist in the DOM. No, it should not be visible. Apparently perfect. Uh, notice how fast this dialog kind of pops up, right? You will not even see in any video. So what I would do probably right here, I would say, wait for a second. And it's not to prevent flake. It's to make it visible in your video recording of a test of like what's happening. Close. And again, we have to confirm that after we click the close button, the model goes away completely. So in this case, it should not exist. No, in this case, it should not be visible again. The difference between should not be visible depends on does it get just hidden or does it really go away from the page? Okay. So I'll post a link to before and after refactoring to all these tests, but I think what I've shown might be useful when you write your own tests.